Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Hey. Eh? Yes. Okay. So the story of Sweetie Pie star Tim Norman and his plot to take out his nephew, Andre Montgomery, has been headline news for over two years. From his arrest, the trial, and then ending with a guilty verdict, we've gone from emotions of shock, anger, and then relief when we found out Andre's family could finally get justice. Now, one thing I've never done with this case is a deep Chronicle Speaks investigation because simply put, this case was handled by the feds and they typically leave no stone unturned. So it was no more that I could find, right? Boy, was I wrong. I'm going to get into all of that and much more. But before we do, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of this tea. Now, let's get back into it. Welcome to Sweetie Pies was a hit show on the OWN Network showing a loving, wholesome family run a soul food restaurant business in the heart of St. Louis, Missouri. This family worked together building a legacy that was intended to be passed down through the generations. We've seen this family go through their ups and we've seen them go through their downs, but the part I like the most is that through it all, they always stuck together. In reality, that was the true family value that made this show worth watching and connected us all to them. Then tragedy struck the family on March 14th, 2016, when they lost Andre Montgomery, the fun-loving cousin to most of the cast, but the grandson to the family matriarch, Robbie Montgomery, and the nephew to Tim Norman. Now, we all knew that Andre passed away from gun violence, but little did we know that this close-knit family would be rocked forever when news hit that Miss Robbie's only living son would be arrested four years later for conspiracy to commit murder for hire of his very own nephew. Now, if we were all shocked as avid watchers of the show, you can only imagine what this family felt. For two years, Tim sat in jail. Many thought a guilty plea would come, but Tim decided to fight and take matters to trial. His three co-conspirators, Terika Ellis, Wael Yagnum and Travail Hill all pled guilty, possibly giving them a lighter sentence and also reducing their charges. But that Tim, I think he really thought he could beat this. With his attorneys being added and then leaving the case, he ended up with powerhouse attorney Michael Leonard. Being that this case did go to trial, we found out so much through testimony and evidence with this case that we probably would not have seen had he not taken it to trial. And according to Tim's co-conspirators and the evidence from this case, Tim attempted to take out multiple insurance policies on his nephew, Andre, in hopes of gaining insurance money upon his death. Only one policy was accepted, and that was through Forrester's insurance, and the policy was for $450,000. Now, according to the testimony and evidence, Tim orchestrated this plan and he devised a team of people that he knew to make it all work. There was Tim's friend, Wally Wyo Yagnum, who was the insurance agent that got the policies going, helping Tim to lie on the application about Andre's weight, income, employment, and sometimes even his address, among other things, but finally securing a policy with Foresters. Then there was Tim's stripper friend, Terika Tanisha Ellis, who Tim had known for many years and had been paying to be intimate with for many years. Tim discovered that Terika knew Andre by looking through Terika's Facebook friend list, and he asked Terika to help him locate Andre the day of the murder. They went to Walgreens, they bought burner phones together, and they would communicate throughout the day, ultimately giving him the final address on Natural Bridge, which is where Andre lost his life. And last but definitely not least, we have Travail Anthony Hill, who agreed to accept $5,000 from the guy that he called Unc, Tim Norman, to take the life of Andre Montgomery. Now, Travail happened to be the star witness for the prosecution, and I think the reason being is that the first charge, conspiracy to commit murder for hire, would only stick with Travail's testimony. You see, in order to conspire, two people would have to agree. Terika was only told to help Tim find Andre, thinking that he would be confronted but never murdered. As you remember, Andre was shot, and as soon as Terika heard the gunshots, she contacted Tim, and her first words to him was, what the fuck? Now, we can't use her for conspiracy because honestly, as slow as she is, she didn't know exactly what was going to go down. So according to Travail's initial testimony, he was contacted by Tim's friend, Chris Carroll, who we all know now as white boy Chris. And Chris said that Tim thought that Travail was charging too much for Andre's murder. 
So there we have conspiracy right there. And I believe that's the reason why they wanted to use Travell as the star witness, although he was a big druggie and it was hard to understand him. Now Travell, trying to look out for Unc, tried to completely throw this case by changing his testimony and saying that Tim had nothing to do with it and this was all on him, completely shocking us all. Prosecution was left to go off of other testimonies and evidence to make sure that the jury knew exactly what Tim Norman did. Now the prosecution probably got the gift of a lifetime when Tim Norman decided to take the stand and I guarantee you one of those jailhouse self-proclaimed attorneys gave him the inclination to do so. Now the prosecution brought up the fact that Tim owed $215,000 to an American Express bill and Tim was facing possible eviction at one time. But they didn't bring up the fact that Tim owes the IRS over $1.5 five million dollars and during the time when Tim was attempting to take all of these policies out on Andre the IRS was in the process of placing liens against him for non-payment let's break down everything Tim Norman y'all keep my theme music So it looks like beginning in 2014, Tim did begin to run into some tax problems on the IRS 2014, 2015, 2016, and so on. So this rich uncle that the defense was trying to make him out to be, I guess, really wasn't it. Tim also developed a company called Armed and Dangerous LLC, and he filed for this company October 1st of 2014, the same month that he actually started taking out policies on Andre. Why would a known felon name a company Armed and Dangerous LLC and knowing what he was getting ready to do? I have no idea. Then the address for Armed and Dangerous LLC was the Sweetie Pies location on Manchester. Like, Tim, what are you thinking? Tim, knowing that you're a felon, why would you name a business Armed Armed and Dangerous LLC. Tim had kidnapping charges, facilitating a felony, inflicting injury, terrorizing, armed criminal action, attempted robbery, robbery first degree, armed criminal action, robbery first degree, assault second degree. Like, why would you name this company Armed and Dangerous? Then those infamous lyrics that he performed for the song, No Pressure. He says, you're on the negative and I ain't got time. But I know some people that can make time cross state lines just to see if you could take nine. The money is the only destination, never had it. Two carrots can bring the rabbits, make them disappear like it's magic. Really, Tim? Really? Bruh. You big dummy. Then one of my subscribers brought to my attention that Terrica Ellis on March 30th, 2020 took to her Facebook page and she says, I'm no longer single. It took him 11 years of friendship to realize I'm the one. Terrica did say she met Tim around 2009, 2010, somewhere around that, right? Now the men was on there cracking up and laughing at her. One man named DeAndre said, don't be getting all happy-go-lucky and cocky because he finally came through after 11 years, lady. Might have your ass out here looking stupid. Boy, was he Terrica right. said, DeAndre, we were friends for 11 years, boo, and yep, I'm happy. She ends it by saying, and he ain't a Memphis nigga. She also had a video of him racing his infamous gray challenger that everyone knows that Tim had. She was pretty much saying that that was her boo, that was her man, that was in 2019. Terrica seems like she was really into Tim and they were still spending a lot of time together from 2016 up until the time that she got locked up and he got locked up. I'm not sure if Tim was the one that Terrica was referring to when she said she was no longer single. I do, however, know this. If Tim and Terrica were to ever get married, she would not have been able to testify against him. That could have been where he was going with it if he was indeed the one that she was referring to. Now, a quick update on what's happening with Tim Norman right now. Now, as we know, his attorney, Michael Leonard, definitely said that he was going to file for a mistrial. There was a new motion entered yesterday, and it says before the court is defendant's amended record and renewed motion for mistrial, document number 395. For the reasons previously stated, the court directed counsel to file a written motion to make an additional record as opposed to making a record in court. The request was considered and denied. The court finds the jury was properly instructed. Accordingly, it is hereby ordered that the defendant's renewed motion for mistrial number 395 is denied. Immediately after the verdict, Tim's attorney did stand up and request a mistrial. The judge did advise him that it would have to be a written motion. So I guess this is the written motion that he filed. And again, it's been denied. 
Judge John Ross went over the jury's instructions with them. It took a long time, and then it also took 18 hours for deliberation. So I definitely believe that they were instructed properly and they handled the case properly. We do know his attorney, Michael Leonard, is not going down without a fight. And I also, for you guys that did not see it in the community tab, wanted to let you know that I did have someone actually draw Tim Norman the day of the verdict. Looking at records, Tim was about 300 and I believe nine pounds in 2018 when he got arrested in Texas. I don't give Tim over maybe 205 now, if that. Y'all know he's tall, but I don't give Tim over 205. Tim has lost so much weight, he's almost unrecognizable. So when you guys see that picture, and like, it looks nothing like Tim. This is exactly what I saw. His face is just a little bit more sunk in. But what I need to know is what you guys think about everything going on in the world of Tim Norman. What do you think the sentencing will be? Do you think he'll get life? Leave a comment and tell me what you think. And you know how we do. We'll talk about it down below. Talk to you guys later. Bye. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new episodes.